Welcome to my ANC talk. I'm Nino Zama. More than 800 journalists have gathered in Mangawung to cover the ANC conference. We now turn our media attention to the media coverage that's been emerging from this conference. We're now joined by Shaga Sisulu, who has been deployed in the ANC communications team. Thank you for joining us in the studio. Thank you very much for having me, Nino. Firstly, Shaga, what would you say are some of the issues that have been dominating the media regarding this conference? Well, going into conference, of course, was the, the, the more elective issues, everyone wondering, you know, uh, how is conference, first of all, wondering how is conference going to play out? Is conference going to be peaceful and harmonious? Is it going to be chaotic? Are we going to see a, 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 a repeat of Polo Is there, uh, 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 Is it going to be potentially divisive? So those are some of the questions that the, the media was, was, was posing and positing. Then, of course, was the issue of uh, uh, who is going to emerge uh, in, in, the leadership, uh, in the leadership elective um, process. Um, and, and you know, so, so that was the, the basic tone or the, the, some of the, the, the issues going into the conference. As the conference started, then a range of things started to come out. So uh, issues with credentials, potentially there was, a, there was, a, there was the potential that uh, Northern West, Northwestern and the Free State delegates. Yeah, the court battle was quite big. It, it played out yeah. uh, a well, lot. Well, so the yeah. impact was, you know, we were only going to uh, you know, get an ascertain what the real implication was on the Tuesday following the Monday's holiday. However, voting needed to start on uh, on uh, initially on Sunday and then on on Monday. So, th the dynamics of that were then captured, and that was obviously turned into a bit of a serial drama. Uh, then, of course, the big question about uh, the leadership battle at the top uh, between Jacob Zuma and between uh, his former deputy Khalema Matlante, and of course the emergence of Cyril. Mm -hmm. uh, Ramaphosa as uh, the eventual deputy. So those those are very very big stories. But would you say uh, the coverage has been fair? There's been lots of rumors, lots of uh, speculation on the side of the journalists. But, but generally, would you say the reporting has been fair and balanced? Well, I mean, you know, the nature of, of these things is that uh, mm -hmm. uh, what attracts attention. You know, it, it would be a, I can guarantee you that we'd probably get a lot more viewers if we got a monkey to jump up and down on set right now uh, than if we just to query on the conversation is normal. And so, so the question always is, you know, what's the hook? What's the interesting mm -hmm. story? And a peaceful conference where everything goes as planned and everybody just talks about the policy and there's a focus on the policy. Yeah, that's nice, but that's mm -hmm. not really why we're sending 800 journalists out here. We really want to get something, we want to get an edge, we want to get into the minds of people, we want the competitive elements, you know, the, the competitive elements. Uh, mm -hmm. We want to understand where people are dissatisfied with the process and so on. So inevitably, the sort of reports that come out must, uh, must you know, as much as they, they have been fair and they have, there has been a lot of balance, they have to do pick up on issues that that uh, the ANC in itself might say, we would prefer that you don't discuss that. So now the previous uh, elective conference in Bulugwani attracted about 300 journalists, mm. and uh, this year 800 journalists, mm. or even more. What do you think has made this conference so particularly interesting to the media? They heard about the parties we have. They <laughs> no. <laughs> no, look, I, it's a big deal. Because it's understood, you know, in South African politics that the ANC is still the biggest political party. It still commands a, a, a huge chunk of the electorate. It's still, I mean, it's a sliver of two-thirds of the, of, of the electorate yeah. that votes for the ANC. It's a huge deal. Yeah. And, and understanding that, uh, you know, uh, even if the ANC support were to dwindle, it would still be a significant party. Seeing what happens with that party is of everyone, is in the interest of everyone, I suppose. Um, the role that South Africa plays in the international community and the role that South Africa plays in the African community are also, you know, also inform people's interests globally. I mean, the Mangaung trended worldwide uh, on, on, um, on Sunday, on Sunday night, and I think going into Monday as well. People are interested. What's happening there? You know, what does this mean for South Africa? What does this mean for the temperature of Africa? And so on and so forth. So, yeah, of course, it's a big deal. And uh, the fact that 
Polo Kwane wasn't just business as usual. Mm -hmm. Something, uh, you know, the landmark decisions came out of Polo Kwane. Things that changed the contour of the political landscape of South Africa. Uh, che, you know, came out of Polo Kwane. So there's a lot more interest. Lots of people are, would, I suppose, would wish Oh my goodness, give us a follow on any day. Shaka <laughs> mm. uh, thank you so much for joining us in the studio. It's been really lovely talking to you. Nice to chat to you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for watching my ANC Talk Real News Without the Issues.